This case was based on circumstantial evidence and it was before a judge alone without a jury. And Justice Ian Harrison found that Chris Dawson's behaviour overall uh, after the alleged disappearance of his wife suggested that he had murdered her. And uh, the judge uh, pulled apart uh, the defence case in his judgment and he said that uh, phone calls Chris Dawson said his wife had made to him after she left the family home uh, just were not probable because he said why would you ring someone you were walking out on and leaving and he said Chris Dawson was the only one who heard from his wife after she disappeared in 1982 so he essentially said he was lying uh, and he said sightings of Lynette Dawson after 1982 that were talked about at the the trial were very unreliable. He said people said they saw her at various locations but it was from a fair distance away uh, and he said that that evidence was unreliable. He said he found that Chris Dawson had motive to kill his wife because he wanted to be um, with his new girlfriend, uh, his student and the family babysitter JC who we can't name for legal reasons. Mm -hmm. This has been such an intriguing case and a lot of it has been too because of a very popular podcast that, mm. was, that was linked to it before the trial even started. Was that, did that make the trial complicated in some way, particularly for the prosecution or the defence side? Did that podcast and the popularity of it? Too? It yeah. did. Uh, the podcast, The Teacher's Pet, got millions of downloads around the world and uh, it was released in 2018. Chris Dawson, by Christmas 2018, had been charged with murder. So that podcast set this whole legal process in motion for his defence team when he was committed to stand trial to try and actually have the trial stayed because they argued that there's no way he would ever get a fair trial after this podcast came out. Now, it depends which way you look at it because, interestingly, a lot of people say after the podcast came out, the DPP uh, was prompted to swing into action and, and lay charges. But the DPP has issued a statement this week saying the DPP acts independently and there's no way uh, they're going to be influenced by the media or a podcast. Now, during the trial, the podcast was mentioned frequently. It was this uh, extra character in the courtroom, mm -hmm. if you like, and uh, the journalist who made the podcast, Hedley Thomas, was also called uh, to be a witness at the mm -hmm. trial. And taking a step back, when Chris Dawson's legal team were trying to have uh, a stay put on the trial, uh, the judge who made that decision and, and ultimately ultimately said, look, it, it can go to trial, um, Justice Elizabeth Fullerton uh, singled out the podcast and she said never before has the court had to deal with something like this. Mm -hmm. She said it was it was huge uh, and it delayed the trial for quite some time because all that legal argy-bargy took just over a year and then the judge put a temporary stay on the trial to allow for a, a cooling off, if you like, so that this podcast could uh, come down and it would hopefully go out of people's minds for some time. But the judge who decided on Chris Dawson's guilt stressed in court during that massive five-hour judgment yeah. um, last week that the podcast was put aside in his decision making. He said he was aware of it, uh, but he said, I'm making my decision based on Chris Dawson's behaviour, things that he did and said, the circumstantial evidence of the case. He was very, very clear about that. Wow. This was the first time, as you say, the court has had to deal with something like this. But crime is such a popular genre in podcasts, books, movies. I'm sure this sort of thing will happen again. Yeah. So what are the implications from this case or, or the lessons for the future? Mm. Well, I think moving forward, the law has um, things in place to deal with these matters, whether it be that someone gets a judge-only trial, not a trial involving a jury, which is what Chris Dawson did. Uh, there can be stays and temporary stays put on cases and sometimes judges can make orders for uh, certain media reports to just be taken down completely. But with the internet and social media now, it's very, very hard to erase those things from people's mm. minds because mm. once they're out there, they're out there. Uh, sometimes juries in jury trials are instructed not to pay attention to any media reports, um, but it does complicate matters. It is something the legal system has to deal with now, and the courts are processing that and, and coming up with ways and acknowledging that that is something that it's just here to stay. Mm. So the Australian story um, on this 
story it will be coming out tomorrow night mm -hmm. um, on ABC TV um, and they and, and the program spoke to the family Lynette Dawson's family do you think they have closure now look it's almost 20 years since Australian Story first spoke to the family and then they were, were searching for answers. Now they have some answers and they were very, very happy uh, about... It, it was a, a mixed blessing for them, mm. uh, hearing Chris Dawson guilty, uh, but also reliving through the trial a lot of the evidence and the things that have sat with them for 40 years. Mm. But they don't have closure yet because Lynette Dawson's body has never been found and what the family uh, have stated is that they'd like Chris Dawson to, to tell them where Lynette's body is mm -hmm. so they can have some sort of finality to this. Um, they'll, they'll never know that unless he comes forward with that information and at this stage his lawyers are indicating that he's likely to appeal uh, so the legal process could, could take some time. So there's always been hope for Lynette Dawson's family and friends. She was a very dearly loved mother of two and no one ever believed she would just walk out on the two children that she loved and mm. never contact them again. Mm. It's an amazing mm. story. It's on tomorrow night, Australian Story. That's right. Yeah. Thank you, Jamel. Good to see you. Jamel, thank you. And you can watch uh, that Australian Story tomorrow night at 8pm on ABC TV or any time after that on ABC iView.